and welcome to HITC Sport. All right. Nothing's really happening in the January transfer window. Christ, well, such as the inaction of most football clubs now. You'd probably find more spending down your local sports direct. Get it? Because because everything's closed. Good Christ, the cinemas have been shot so long. I'm pretty sure the popcorn probably tastes like shredded wheat. Anyway, this video is a warning. Do not share a bed with thug. I mean, no, 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 the warning is this. I'm gonna find what club from each of the big European leagues is not to be bought from. Take this as a helpful and friendly red light. I'm just gonna show you who has a track record for selling absolute flops to the Premier League. This is just like me exposing a fraudster who scams old ladies on eBay. Yeah, they think they've just paid 50 quid for a nice rocking horse for their grandkids, and Instead, three weeks later, you just receive a bag of buttered toenails through the letterbox. So please, heed this warning and do not buy from these football teams. La Liga Sevilla. Yeah, Sevilla just won the Europa League. Usually that means Premier League clubs would rival through their squad, milking them dry just like the sidemen when they suckle at KSI's teeth. Well, nobody did this summer. Any guesses why? Probably because I think people are finally catching on that shopping as a Premier League club at Sevilla would be like letting Shane Dawson babysit your cat. Or if James Charles decided to do a makeup tutorial in the heartbeat of Redneck, Texas. Pretty sure that's how you end up drowned in a lake. Listen, I've seen Manchester United linked to rising star Lucas Ocampos. Oh, uh, no, no, trust me, do not do it. This is almost a public safety announcement. Signing him will be like marrying one of those plastic candles out of Geordie Shore. I promise you, you'd be better off eating a bowl full of Vaseline. Let me tell you, Sevilla FC are an absolute horror show for Premier League exports. And if you think I'm making this up, then uh, no, unlike I'm Alex, I do have proof. Does, uh, does every West Ham fan and remember Kepa Blanco? Why would you? His impact at your club was about as forgettable as Deji's YouTube channel. A Spanish striker who arrived on loan in 2007 and scored once in eight games. What else? Sebastian Scalacci was a Copa del Rey winner, winning center half at Sevilla. Then he was given away to Arsenal in 2010 for five million quid and was so bad that some fans are probably still seeking weekly therapy because of him. Who else? Both Juan Cala and Gary Medel swapped Sevilla for Cardiff in the summer of 2013 and absolutely stunk up the place. Limping to relegation under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Mattel was a club record 11 million pound signing at the time. And that's the sad thing is, I'm not even close to being done. Which ironically is probably what Shane Dawson whispered in the ear of his cat. Antonio Luna was a Spanish left back, sold Aston Villa in June 2013. And yes, he scored in his debut in a 3-1 win at Arsenal, back when Claude looked like he was in his early 30s. But other than that match, Luna is just a piece of defensive chewing gum stuck to Paul Lambert's bench. Luis Alberto, a technically gifted Spanish winger, but with the upper body of a prepubescent squirrel, he arrived at Anfield for nearly 7 million quid in June 2013, and mostly spent the year complaining about the rain. Yes, Alvaro Negredo was admittedly at pretty decent 16 million pound buy from Man City that same summer, but he was not anything close to being world class. Don't forget, he only ever scored 9 league goals for the club, and Jesus Navas arrived in his suitcase for 15 million pounds, had the end product of a toilet brush. 4 goals in 123 league games for City. For a winger, if Raheem Sterling produced those sort of stats, Pep would probably drown him in a shallow ditch with his bare hands. Alberto Moreno was supposed to be a terrific 12 million pound signing for Liverpool in 2014. No, he was a mostly garbage left back who could barely control his own feet and was eventually just replaced by someone off the back of a relegation with Hull City. Federico Fazio was an £8 million centre half arrival at Tottenham that same summer and he was so bad, Spurs had to beg Sevilla to take him back on loan. I'm still not done. Vicente Ebora, a 15, yes, 15. £15 million pound signing for Leicester in the summer of 2017. He was supposed to be N'Golo Kante's spiritual heir in midfield. Now, again, just a big sack of wet garbage before being flogged to Villarreal within 18 months. And I am still not done. Yes, Josie Antonio Reyes went on to have a great career. God rest his soul. But the truth is, he was another unsettled winger who couldn't hack it in North London. The only Soviet export I can confirm as an unequivocal success was Swansea signing Fernando Llorente for £5 million in 2016 and watching him bang on 15 goals in his debut season. But he is the only one, he is the exception to the rule. Everyone else, pretty bad. Lads, buying from Sevilla. It's like emailing your bank details to a Nigerian prince. Don't do it. Syria, Fiorentina. Do not even think about handpicking any player out of Fiorentina right now. You don't believe me? Okay, okay, let's have a look then. Take a look, Mauro Zorati and Mario Suarez were both given away to Watford and couldn't have looked more disinterested on the pitch. Juan Cadrado, a star of the 2014 World Cup with Colombia. This guy was signed as Mo Salah's replacement at Chelsea, a fella that they actually deemed to be a better player than a future Premier League and Champions League winner. Not only was this a £23 million deal, but Fiorentina even received Salah on loan as well. You cannot fathom how horrific a business decision this was. Christ, chucking away a future cash cow like Salah, it's been like Justin Bieber's dad abandoning him at birth. 
Cuadrado played 15 games, scoring a big bag of nothing before being shuffled out the door to Juventus. Stefan Jovetic, a Montenegrin wonder kid, who was one of the most sought after attacking talents in Europe after five years of Fiorentina. Finally, Man City won the race in a 25 million pound deal in 2013, and then uh, 11 goals in nearly 50 matches, and just eight in the league across two seasons. This guy was supposed to be the Balkan Aguero. Nah, nah, he was just an expensive, injury prone waste of time. But you can't say City weren't warned. It happened five years earlier when they signed Valerie Boyanov, another wonder kid striker of Fiorentina, when he moved to Man City in 2007, then immediately breaks his knee in half, then slaps his Achilles tendon the following preseason. And so that's eight million pounds for just one goal in 12 matches. They're lucky that happened around the time they won the lottery, because usually that's a type of financial recklessness which could turn a football club like City into a seaside bed and breakfast. Again, Matai Anastasic was a Serbian centre back who moved to City in 2012, never settled, and his legacy will forever be known as the guy who lost an FA Cup final to Wigan. The only, the only import from Fiorentina who resembled anything close to a success was Marcus Alonso moving to Chelsea in 2016. And when that defensive cabbage is held up as the greatest signing from this club, that kind of proves you Fiorentina is a hellhole to shop at. League on Bordeaux. Yeah, Bordeaux is a club you need to avoid at all costs. How many more flops need to litter the Premier League before chairman wisen up and realise it's clearly a cursed dumping ground? If I was the chairman of a football team and I needed a new player, I would sooner dig up a couple of corpses in Indian burial ground than I would trust Bordeaux with my money. But fair play to Bordeaux. This is a club who bought a young Wabi Kadri for £1 million in 2014 and then within the space of a year shook gullible Sunderland down for 10 times that price. Yeah, the Tunisian winger had his moments in a Sunderland shirt, but three goals in nearly 40 games, being part of a limp bunch of no-hopers that got meekly relegated at the, foot, at the foot of the league, losing nearly every week and for one tenth of 100 million pounds? Just ridiculous. Henry Saivet was another one who rocked up in the northeast in January 2016 to Newcastle for 5 million quid. You, now you probably assume he was instantly dumped upon relegation, right? The same way you'd dump someone if they shaved off your hair in your sleep. That he was told to go grab a job in Weatherspoons since no other football club would possibly want him, right? No, no, no. It is five years later and he is still at the club somehow. He never plays, no manager rates him, and yet this fella is halfway towards a testimonial. He's only ever played five league games for the club in half a decade, and soaking up £35,000 a week in wages. Altogether, this man has been a colossal £15 million drain on resources at the club, and he's had about as much influence on the team as a pair of mouldy socks. Gabriel Overtime was supposed to be Ronaldo's heir at Manchester United's right wing, arriving from Bordeaux for a bargain £3 million quid in the summer of 2009. A bargain? <laughs> no. £3 million Pounds, the cost of a nine bedroom mansion in LA for a winger who is physically unable to cross the ball for a guy who honestly looks like he's escaped area 51 Ronaldo scored nearly 120 goals for this club Oberdan scored one against Bursa Spor. Julian Faubert was an £8 million waste of space at West Ham, and for some insane reason still managed to bag a loan move to Real Madrid. I can only assume the board of directors has been up all night drinking shoe polish. What else? Johan Kufram was a cup price £500,000 signing for Newcastle in January 2013. And sure, he had purple patches of form, but was mostly a frustrating, bleach blonde waste of time who contributed to just the club's second ever relegation from the Premier League. Alexi Smirton was a top Russian international midfielder, but also stuck up the Chelsea team under Claudio Ranieri before being Tossed away like a stale yogurt pot by Jose Mourinho. And finally, Maron Schemack, a guy who'd banged in over 30 goals in his previous two seasons for Bordeaux, helped them win the league, then moves to Arsenal and was supposed to be the perfect partnership for Rob Van Persie. No, he scores 8 goals in 40 games. Do not ever sign from Bordeaux. As much as I love Hatton Bonarfa with all of my heart, I know that if he does leave this club for a Premier League team, the curse will tear his talent to shreds as well. Bundesliga Bayern Munich. Okay, this isn't the worst example of cursed football clubs, because they're having some good Premier League imports from Bayern Munich, but it's still nowhere near enough. Here's the list of unequivocal successes. Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, a great £12 million deal for Southampton back in 2016. And Rocky Santa Cruz was a one-season wonder for Blackburn before they cashed in for six times what they paid him for. So that's... that's it. Two. Renato Sanchez was your 2016 winning golden boy. One of the most exciting teenage talents in Europe. And, and so Swansea pulled off a coup, borrowing him from Bayern for a year. And he was arguably one of the biggest disappointments this league has ever seen. He only managed 12 games, lost his place in a Swansea team hurtling towards relegation. What else? Bastian Schweinsteiger, one of the best midfielders of his generation. He chucks his one club legacy in the bin to move to Manchester United in 2015. And again, was a complete shadow, a once great world champion, being outshone by the likes of Maron Fellaini. That should not happen. 
Dortmund. Owen Hargreaves was a big money 17 million pound signing for Man United in 2007. And yes, he had a perfect debut season, winning both the Premier League and Champions League, banging in a free kick against Arsenal. But after that, Roy Keane's spiritual heir was an injury hit bag of bones, playing just four times in three years and being labelled as Fergie's biggest ever regret. And so listen, Thiago Alcantara might come good at Anfield, but lads, the, <laughs> the signs don't look good. It's like returning to the same Chinese takeaway who gave you food poisoning six times in a row and just expecting it to be different. No, no, you're probably going to be puking up blood and broccoli for the next three weeks. Eredivisie AZ Alkmaar. This isn't even a joke. AZ Alkmaar. Do not sell any more of your rubbish to the Premier League, please. They have essentially littered this league with subhuman flesh. Okay, maybe a bit harsh, but still. Look at this list of serial disappointments they've cashed in on. I like Alariza Jahanbash, but he was marketed as a 22 goal a season winger. That's what Brighton paid 80 million pounds for. Not a return of four goals in 51 games and just two league goals in 40 matches. What else? Vincent Janssen, a guy who slammed home 31 goals in his only season at Aizan Akmar. Tricking Tottenham into paying 17 million pounds for him in 2016. A guy who was going to push Harry Kane all the way, right? <laughs> nope. Just two league goals later, proving himself to be one of the most expensive and biggest duds in Tottenham's history. He is currently 26 now the back arts of Mexico with a crippled self-belief. Who else? Steven Bergwies was a talented 10 goal a season winger for Al Kamar. Then he moves to Watford for 5 million quid in 2015 and doesn't score a single goal before being chucked back to Holland where he's now hitting 20 goals a season for Feyenoord. Yes, Moussa Debeli was a bargain signing for Fulham in 2010 but that is it. That is the only success I can find. Josie Altador. He was smashing on 30 goals a season for Al Kamar. He belted in 54 goals in just 2 seasons out in Holland and then he ties up a big money move to Sunderland and then proceeds to score just 1 Premier League goal in 42 games of football. One single Single goal. What? Nonsense. Anyway, that's it, villains. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Am I being too harsh? Let me know what team in these leagues do you think is the biggest curse? The ones not to buy from. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.